Thank you for your patience. I hope it wasn't too stuffy. I wish I'd opened the door a little bit wider or maybe even got the door open at the back. It's hard to think of everything during the speech. Are there any questions or comments? What influence did the city government have on Calvin? John asks, what influence did Augustine of Hippo have on Calvin? Very good question. Augustine of Hippo, 354 to 430, was by far and away the greatest of the church fathers. Augustine of Hippo took the writings of the church fathers, assimilated them, understood them, went deeper into the scriptures and built upon and developed the church's theology. So that Augustine of Hippo developed and deepened the church's understanding of the Trinity, of sovereign and particular grace, of the perseverance of the saints. He made improvements on the doctrines of both the sacraments, of God's government of history, of original sin, and various other topics. Sometimes I think that the Reformation, humanly speaking, would have been impossible without Augustine. See, Martin Luther came along and Luther said, we're not saved. We can't stand before God on the basis of our own works. They're all done. Filthy rags. Two scriptural phrases for our works that we try and base our righteousness upon them. And the Church of Rome said, you give me anybody after the death of the apostles who taught that. And Luther really couldn't come up with anybody. There were a few people who made some suggestions. St. Patrick actually, I think, had a good practical grasp of justification by faith alone. There were a few people before the Reformation, Lefebvre de Tablo, but he was keeping his head down above the parapets. He wasn't going to stand for much. There were a few people... So that was a key thing. And the reformers didn't really have much in church history, but the Bible clearly taught it. They could prove that. But justification by faith alone stands within a broader framework of salvation by grace alone. Salvation according to God's gracious election, which involves the blacker side, reprobation of some to eternal destruction. Irresistible grace, by which God not only preaches the word to us through a minister, but changes people in their hearts, regenerates them, gives them life, and preserves them to the end. And Augustine all other good points of this doctrine of the church and so on. And so the reformers were able to say that, yeah, justification by faith alone wasn't taught in the church in the early days, apart from one of the really apostolic fathers, but set him aside too. It wasn't taught or wasn't taught by most people, it wasn't understood. But with salvation by grace alone, we have the greatest of the church fathers. And even you, the Church of Rome, realize that. And Rome calls Augustine the doctor of grace. And so Calvin's Institutes are liberally sprinkled with quotes from Augustine. This book, Calvin's Calvinism, uh, dealing with God's eternal pre predestination and secret providence. I'm going to page through it here. This book's nicely laid out. It's... Uh, the long quotes are indented, and you can see here, indent, indent, indent. Hence, Augustine advisedly observes. The number of times Augustine's quoted in there is dozens of times. It's the same with his institutes. So, Augustine was the greatest of the church fathers and was used to bring the reformers to a deeper understanding of grace and was then used as defense and for apologetic purposes that we are not alone saying this. Augustine taught this. And indeed, Augustine had disciples in the generation or two after him, and other people in the Middle Ages taught what Augustine said. Like God shall be rotted in prison because he believed in election and reprobation, because the Arminians of his day didn't want him to go about Europe preaching the gospel, so they locked him up and put him behind bars. So Augustine, the number one man quoted by Calvin in his institutes and throughout all his works. And you could say the same thing with Luther and the other reformers. And it has even been said that the Reformation can be understood as a battle between two strands in Augustine's theology. His true biblical doctrines of grace and then the false things that Augustine developed with some aspects of his church. Rome took the dung from Augustine and developed popery and the reformers rejected the dung and went with the gold and built the church of Jesus Christ. He is the key man. 
the theologian of the early theologians. And in the Middle Ages, if you quote Augustine, he's worth ten theologians, and everybody knew it. Any other questions? Okay, John. Julian? How come it was safe for him to be in Geneva? Was the politics of Geneva completely different from France? France was a nation state at that stage. The king was Francis I. He was king over his own territory, and Geneva was a Swiss canton. So if Francis I wanted to get at Calvin, he would have to invade Geneva. And Geneva was protected by a more powerful uh, canton to the north and east called Bern, which is the administrative capital of Switzerland to this day. And so if you attacked Geneva, Bern, and the other Protestant cantons would come to your aid. And then the more Zwinglian cantons to the east, they were federated together. They would probably have defended too, like Zurich. And in God's providence, the military, the military might of Francis I and France couldn't be directed against Geneva because Francis I fell out with Charles V, the Roman Emperor, and the two of them were at loggerheads, and they were fighting each other. They were the two superpowers of the day. And if ever the two of them could have been at peace, Francis probably would have brought the armies in. But he kept falling out. It's like the time when Saul, king of Israel, almost had David. He was chasing him around the mountain. He was just about to lay his hand on him. And the next thing he heard a word, the Philistines have invaded from the southwest. And he had to leave off chasing David to defend. And that's what happened. The ones who were closest to invading Geneva were actually the Savoyards. Uh, the Duke of Savoy to the south. He was another ardent Roman Catholic. But he never managed to do it either. But the Genevans um, were in constant state of preparedness for attack, especially from the Savoy Yards. And they would fortify their walls and man the city gates. And uh, they, there was one major attack too after Calvin died, as well as, as, well as others, but God kept uh, defending them. And then later on, when Geneva's economic prosperity went on the decline, to defend Geneva, various Genovese uh, ministers and statesmen would tour parts of Europe, like the Netherlands with a bit more money, raise money for the theological education and the and, uh, military welfare, the military defense of the city, and build up the walls again to keep the Savoy Yards out, because if they'd have gotten in, they would, they would have massacred them and brought them back to the heathen Rome. Do you think Calvin would have san sanctioned taking up arms? Oh yes. Well, like Calvin would have sanctioned taking up, but we would too. I mean, if you were in a if you were in a, a country, uh, you know, an, an enemy country comes in and they're gonna they're gonna butcher you, you know, it's in the Second World War. That was definitely a just a just war. If you were attacked, and Augustine was the theologian in defense of the just war. It's sort of like self defense. If I go out there at night and some guy pulls a knife on me, I'm not terribly fit or strong or skilled knives, but I'm going to put up a bit of an attempt at least, and so do countries when they're attacked. Yeah. Any other questions? Just one other question. Sure. Uh, you, uh, which opposition to Calvin stemmed from even up today to professing evangelicals regarding uh, Michael Smith, Sabitas, as you call him? Mm. What part did uh, Calvin play in that? that okay. Um, you've all been sitting for a good while. Are you content to sit a little bit longer to be here about Servetus? Yeah. I'll open the door a little bit, get a bit, of fresh, bit more fresh air in. You're all familiar with that story? Okay. Michael Servetus was burned at the stake in Geneva in Calvin's day. And Michael Servetus is the number one stick used to beat Calvin and his followers to this day around the head. That's the significance of Servetus. Servetus was a Spanish physician. And Servetus was perhaps the greatest heretic in Europe in his day. Servetus called the Trinity Cerberus, the three-headed monster. He despised the truth of the Trinity and he was a Unitarian. Servetus was an Anabaptist. Servetus was a devout Arminian. Salvation is by the free will of the sinner. That was